Hi, this is Scott Kilo, Sierra 6, Delta Alpha Yankee, and uh, I've been away for a bit, been on a bit of a hiatus uh, for a number of reasons. I've not been able to do uh, videos for actually about three months now. A lot of it has to do with some, uh, some issues at work, and I'm, I'm fairly busy there, and it's keeping me from doing things like this, but things are starting to open up now, and I can get back to uh, doing what I was doing before. There are some other things, too, as well, that I might talk about as time goes by, but uh, suffice it to say I'm, I'm back and I'm kind of picking up where I left off and I was talking a lot about the iLoons HA1 series of radios when I kind of um, went on that little hiatus. Uh, I was talking a lot about the HA1 Golf and the HA1 UV and I'm going to continue doing that for a bit because although I've been on hiatus I have been messing with radios and I've been messing with these a lot. Um, these are rapidly becoming just my favorite radios. I just use them for everything now. Uh, in particular, my HA1 Golf, it goes everywhere in my go bag now. Um, and it kind of just by default has become the radio that I'm, I'm drawn to, despite the fact that I have radios that, you know, on paper are uh, much more capable radios. I don't find those radios to be nearly as capable or user-friendly as these. So uh, I'm going to be doing a lot more work and continuing doing work with uh, with these radios because I think they're excellent and I think a lot more people need to know about them. So what I want to talk about today is uh, something that's kind of the hot topic of the week in relation to these radios and that is the new firmware update that's recently come out. I think it came out right at the end of July and specifically we're talking about firmware update 1.01.12.005. It's the one that's most currently listed on the, uh, the island's um, software support portion of their website. And while I'm not a big fan of firmware updates, it's not something that I, I really mess with all that often, unless there's a really important firmware update, um, oftentimes I just kind of let them go. I, I, don't, I don't chase firmware updates all that often. But on this one, I noticed it did a couple of cool things, and I thought I would go ahead and install it on both radios, and I was able to do so with no problems whatsoever. So let me talk about what you get off of this firmware update, because I'm going to encourage you to, to perhaps pursue this if you're an owner of one of these radios. So I'll kind of go through and talk, actually show you the first couple of updates so it, we can kind of, you know, better to show you than talk about it. So the first little cool thing that this firmware update allows you to do, and it serves no practical purpose, to be honest with you. It's purely a, an aesthetic thing, um, a, a means of personalizing your radio. But I, I think it's kind of cool. And what we're talking about here is the ability to add a splash screen image, a custom splash screen image. And it's very, very easy to do, remarkably easy to do. Um, so I'll go ahead and turn the radio on and show you what you get. Now, normally you get the Red of Us logo as your splash screen. But in this case, uh, what you get on these radios is this. Ah, nice little Spectre Gear logo. And I'll show you on the other radio. Boom. Nice little Spectre Gear logo from my company, SpectreGear.com. Um, again, purely a, a vanity thing, to be honest with you. But I thought it was neat. And you can put any image you want on there. Um, and I'll, I'll do a video later on and show you how to do that. It's a very simple, simple process. If you know anything about manipulating images uh, and resizing images, that's really all you need to know. And the ability to save something as a .bmp bitmap file, and you're good to go. Um, and then you just upload it with a new CPS. And I will tell you, if you do the firmware update on this, you're going to need to uh, load the latest CPS so that it can support these new options that are available on the radio. So you'll need to download both at the same time. And you can do that easily by going to the iLoons website, go to their software support section for whichever radio you're going to be uh, messing with, and you can find everything there, including uh, very extensive instructions. Just follow those instructions to the letter, and you should be able to accomplish the firmware update with no problem. At least I was able to with no problem. Uh, but I did need to uh, mess, I did need to download that CPS first before I did the firmware update. So the next thing you get, and this is a bit more practical, and that is a, a change in your display. And it's it's a subtle change, but it's actually a really effective one. And you'll note, uh, 
just beneath our alphanumeric character here, so TCRC G2 is a repeater. Uh, you have your channel slot, which is channel 24 on this radio. And then you'll note to the right of that, 462.675, which is the receive frequency for this repeater. And this is one thing that I've dealt with on other radios before, where I have a lot of repeaters or certain channels that are, that are named um, and oftentimes I, I kind of lose track of which frequency I'm talking about. And if you're dealing with a fairly large repeater group, for instance, uh, here we got TCARC uh, 6. Now these are the repeaters for the Tulare County Amateur Radio Club. And as I go through here, you'll note that there's nine of those. And they're all subtle, subtle differences between them. We got 443, 3500, uh, 440.400, then 146. 8800 and it's uh, it's kind of nice to be able to determine which is which as you're going through there so that's a, actually a fairly helpful little thing beyond that there's really not much that's changed in terms of the display now <coughs> excuse me um, from a couple of firmware updates uh, back we did get the ability for both radios both the HA1 Golf and the HA1 UV to have the white text and the blue background. Now, if you saw my review on the original HA1 Golf when it first came out, it was black text on a blue background, and it was awful. That was one of the first things that they changed. Um, and it was an effective change, but if you haven't done that yet, you'll get that now. Now, the uh, next couple of things that come up, I'm going to have to actually tell you about them versus show you. The, um, the next thing that the firmware update brings you is an expanded receive range on the radios. Now, this particular range is kind of impressive, actually, because now with this firmware update, this radio allegedly is going to be able to uh, receive from, and let me have a look at my notes here, make sure I get this right, from 18 megahertz to 660 megahertz. That's one receive range. And the second receive range is 840 megahertz to 1300 megahertz. That's damned impressive. And I'll add to that, aviation band reception has been included. So you get 108 to 136 megahertz. You have the ability to have that in your receive range, and that's AM. Now, you're probably going to benefit um, or be able to get more out of that with a better antenna. Uh, fortunately, because this is the, the proper SMA connection for it, you can use the excellent Diamond SRH77CA antenna, and that's going to be able to bring in some of, those, uh, some of those more distant signals and get better reception on the radio. But that's an impressive portion of the upgrade. I really like that they did that because it turns this into a more effective tool for intelligence gathering. And let's see, what else do we have? Um, so our received signal strength indicator. Um, so what we, what we get here is radio now displays the corresponding DBM value of RSSI, is what they show in the notes for uh, receiving or incoming calls. Now, I hadn't noticed this as a factor before, but allegedly now we have a signal strength indicator for incoming signals. So that way you can give a, a, a more informed report on how well someone is being received by your radio. Um, the next one up. Now, I'm going to admit complete ignorance on this. I don't know what this applies to or how it applies, and I would hope that someone in the uh, comment section can, uh, can chime in if they've messed with this at all. But you get now you have something called one-touch frequency pairing, and when you go to the menu, the menu is now changed just a little bit. So you have this new one-key frequency pairing, and when you press that, what it does is it's doing a scan. Now it's it's scanning frequencies and it's scanning and it's it's doing it in a weird range, 120 to 165. Um, I. I'm going to have to look more into this and, and, and see exactly what this is and what it pertains to. And I'll get back to you on that one. Um, I have no clue um, on that. Um, allegedly, let's see if there's anything in scan, if that's changed at all. Ah, we have a VFO scan and a channel scan. Now, I don't know if that was missing before or not. I think it was. Um, but that may, be, uh, that may be something I didn't notice before. Okay, so... That's kind of about it in terms of the updates. It's not a it's not an earth shattering update, but it does add a couple of interesting new features to this uh, 
this set of radios that are like there have been some reports you know i've reported the good let me report the bad although this did not happen with me both firmware updates went with no problem whatsoever i did the firmware update it erased nothing on the radio and it didn't move anything around everything is exactly where i left it i did the firmware update i had the new features but all of my program memory channels are still in the same place they were when I started. Um, I've had no trouble uploading or writing to the radio, but there have been some reports that iLunes actually mentions. Uh, some people have reported after the firmware update a difficulty writing to the radio. And they say if that's occurred, you need to contact them and they can walk you through a solution, I imagine. Um, and I, I do know I had, I did see one report on a Facebook user group where someone mentioned something like that. Uh, but for me on both radios everything went just fine and everything's working just fine so i thought i'd throw that out there and, and give you an idea of, uh, of what this is about i see people talk about firmware updates a lot and how to do firmware updates but i don't really see people talk much about what you get once you've done that so there you go so this is um, this is a good way of kind of getting back into the swing of things and as i mentioned i am going to be working a lot more with these radios um I don't know if I'm going to do something as formal as an actual operator series or just start doing a bunch of videos showing how to do certain things on the radio, but um, I should be back from this point forward to regular uploading, and I'm going to be, again, paying a, a lot of attention to these radios because I'm, I'm no, no BS. These radios are very, very good for what they are. Um, they're affordable, they're, they're durable, they're weather resistant, they're excellent little MCOM radios, and I use them constantly. Uh, this HA1 Golf goes with me everywhere now. It's, a, it's on my bag, it's my EDC radio, it's, it's, and I don't really feel the need to be grabbing anything else when I'm, you know, hitting the road or getting ready to leave and go outside. I'm always grabbing one of these each and every time, and they just really appeal to me on, on a lot of uh, lot of levels. So more to come on the HA1 series, but with that, I'll go ahead and bring it to a close. Thank you for watching and or listening. This is Scott, Kilo Sierra 6, Delta Alpha Yankee from Visalia, California. Have a wonderful day.